The curtain wall tool in Revit is extremely versatile. Mastering this tool will enable you to create all of the following. Glazing, battens or slat walls, architectural cladding on facades, Lysart custom orb cladding, or a combination of these. Like in this example where battens have been combined into a conventional curtain wall system and even sloped glass roof systems. Follow along as I share the key steps to model all of these in Revit. Curtain walls are made up of three parts. Mullions, system panels, and curtain grids. A strong understanding of the curtain wall components is important as it will enable you to come up with all kinds of combinations like this. Or even here, where I have combined multiple system panels to create a truly bespoke design. As an important note, curtain systems are primarily used for generic or mass models. I won't be talking about this tool in this tutorial. Now, let's look at solutions to common problems, starting with adding a door to a curtain system. In a 3D view, find the curtain wall that you would like to work with and zoom in to the area where the auto door will go. Start by selecting the curtain wall and ensure that it's unpinned. From there, select the mullions to be removed, unpin these and press delete. With the mullions removed across a single line, select the curtain grid that lies behind them, unpin and then from the ribbon select add and remove segments. You'll need to do this to both sides. You should now be left with a single pane where the mullions have been removed. Continue this method until all required mullions have been removed. Down at the bottom, there is no need to remove the grid line. Now simply remove the vertical sections. Once all the mullions have been removed, unpin, select add and remove segments and then select the curtain wall grid. And now one single pane remains. Ensure this is unpinned and then from the type selector, choose the door family that you would like to use. Let's now look at corner mullions. In plan view, zoom into a curtain wall corner. On screen, we have one curtain wall here and another over here. I will zoom into a joint where these two meet. As you can see, these are slightly overlapping and not the way it should be done. To fix this, Start by determining the curtain wall thickness, which in this case is 150. From here, most people have select the mullion and then from the type selector, click edit. But what you should know is that this will edit the curtain wall system as highlighted here. There is in fact a better way. On the project browser under families, you will find the curtain wall mullions category and further down the rectangular mullion family. Select any of the pre-existing options and duplicate. Rename accordingly and then edit the type properties. Here the thickness is set, so move down to the values here. Now 
then switch to a 3D view and zoom into your target area. I will set the view to hidden line so that the mullions are easier to see. Next, on the Viz graphics, I will turn off the curtain panels and systems, leaving only the mullions visible. I can now select all of the corner vertical mullions using the selection box. Unpin each of the highlighted mullions and press delete. Move up to the ribbon and on the architecture tab find the mullion button. Now move over to the type selector where only the mullions and not the curtain systems are listed. And pick the newly created mullion that you just made. Paying attention to the ribbon and the grid line option that is picked by default, hover the mouse over the corner edge until a grid line appears, like this, and click to place. Then switch back to the floor plan for adjustments. Right away you should be able to see a change from the previous floor plan. Now. Only one of the two curtain walls has a mullion and a thick one at that. I can now toggle the wall joints to create a smooth, clean corner. I think it would be beneficial to now demonstrate how to convert this section of curtain wall into architectural cladding. The first step is to delete these sunshades. I can then select the curtain wall system and I will duplicate and rename. Now I want you to pay specific attention to the curtain panel parameter and also the vertical and horizontal mullions here. Because these are not required in this system, I will select each of these and set the value to none. I will now click OK and Revit will warn me that the mullions are no longer type driven, as in not driven by the curtain wall type. And I can now click to delete these. So now what I'm left with is only a system panel, which is currently the glazing type. Over on the project browser, notice the system panel category. And just like we did for the mullions, we can create a new type. Expanding this category, notice the various panels that I made previously. To create a new panel from scratch, simply right click on the system panel name and choose new type. With that created, I can now set its properties. The first parameter to configure is the thickness. And then we can check the offset parameter. I will leave this as it is for now, so that you can see the effect of changing this later. Following on, select the material parameter, where I can create a new material and assign a colored finish. I will again change the display and this time go back to the shaded setting 
so that the system panel color is visible. Now that I have created a new system panel, I can apply it to the curtain wall type that I created just a moment ago. To do that, I swap out the glazed for the example panel. Switch over to a plan view now. This is what the panels look like. As I select the curtain wall, notice the blue selection line and how it passes through the center of the panel. Keep that in mind as I go back to the example system panel and edit the offset parameter. Let's embellish this a little. I will create some new mullions, something thin so that it can run along the face of the system panel. And then I can edit the system type so that the mullions are included. However, I only want these to appear internally, so I leave the border parameters as set to none. So the mullions have now been added, but I'd like to project these to the front so that they line up with the system panel. So just like I did with the system panel, I can change the offset parameter setting from the project browser. That looks much better. And I will now switch to plan view to check that all is in order. And now let me show you how to convert this architectural cladding into timber battens or slats. Let's start by duplicating and renaming the curtain system again. This time, we will only be working with mullions. I will now apply the timber batten mullion that I created previously. Again, I'll only associate these to the interior type parameters. My battens are vertical only, so I will set the horizontal interior type also to none. Revit again reminds me that the mullions are no longer type driven and we can proceed to delete these. I now need to remove the yellow system panel. I can do this through the type editor. But I can't just set this to none like I have done for other curtain wall components. Notice as I do that, nothing happens, the panels remain. Over here on the browser, notice this empty system panel. If I go back to the type editor and now replace none with empty, the panels are removed. The next function to unpack is mullion spacing. I want the battens closer together, so I can change this to 200. That's great, but I am left with a strange gap at the corner here. To fix this, select the curtain system and on the properties, change the vertical grid justification to center. Notice, this adds more mullions. The number has increased from 36 to 41. While looking at the number parameter, this is currently greyed out. To activate this parameter, change the layout setting in the type properties to fixed number. To close out the battens, 
other interesting controls are angle. This enables the battens to be rotated. Like this. It is also possible to lay curtain wall systems using the roof tool. Let me show you. Starting in the floor plan view, pick the roof tool and I'm going to draw a footprint. Select the appropriate level. And then use the draw tools to sketch the roof boundary. With that done, switch over to a 3D view where the roof system is now visible. At this stage, it's just a generic roof, but over on the type selector, I can scroll down to sloped glazing, which changes the roof structure instantly. Let's unpack this a little. I can select the roof system and click edit type. And all of a sudden, this looks just like the curtain systems we have seen throughout this video. But with one important difference, it's a sloped glazing system family. The three structural elements visible at the moment are timber battens, which we have already seen. I can duplicate the system to create something more interesting. I have all the parameters as previously shown. Notice there is no longer vertical and horizontal grids, but now it's grid one and grid two. I'm going to create my own mullion and use it as a beam. On the project browser, I can create a new family type called example. In the type properties, I ensure that the profile type matches. The profiles are listed down here. And I am free to edit these and create whatever I choose. Now all I have to do is to apply that mullion system to the roof system. I hope that you learnt something new and that this video was useful. If this is true for you, please consider hitting the like button. I'd love to help you out, so let me know in the comments of any issues that you may have. That's it from me and I hope to see you in the next video.